Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we've got something a bit different for you. We're here with Russ from Natural Smoke. We're at Natural Smoke HQ. For those of you who don't know about his business, we're here with Russ and he's gonna tell us a bit about it. So um, my family and I uh, run Natural Smoke. Uh, started a few years ago. Um, and uh, like it's just my wife and my two kids um, with some help from extended family. So uh, yeah, that's been really cool. Um, all of the gear is sourced from South Australia. Um, a lot of it coming from the Riverland. Um, some of the some of the varieties here, um, we, we sort of cater for all all protein types, and you'll notice that uh, that all the chunks are of very similar size, and that's no that's no accident. Um, we do that to ensure that when you get it back home um, and into your barbecues, whether it be a drum, uh, Weber kettle, Weber GA offset, um, that your um, barbecue is running smoothly and efficiently, and and making some good barbecue. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so how about we go and let's see what happens behind the scenes. Cool, sounds good. Right, you guys, so we're going to use apple as an example. Uh, this stuff has come from the Riverland. Um, it was collected six months ago-ish, um, and it's been sitting here against the shed, north-facing since. Um, this is the first um, sort of seasoning that it gets. Um, and as you can see, a way of, tell, a way of telling if, if wood is seasoned, one is graze on the edge. That's caused by uh, the UV light from the sun, as well as some of these little splits here. You'll see that the, the wood is contracted and, and expanded so much so that it's actually started to crack and the bark is all but starting to come off, which is a good sign. Um, this stuff, like I said, about six months ago, uh, Dad and I went and collected it and, and all this gets done um, on my days off. I uh, have a full-time job. Uh, on, um, this is just a side business. Um, but so what we'll do, we'll fire up the, uh, the log splitter and, uh, and I'll show you the next step. Right here guys, so um, what we've done is we've created a couple of splits. Um, normally, um, let's say it was iron bark, it, that would be shorter. Um, as you can see, there's a whole lot over there that, that need to be cut. That'll be cut into rounds. This is fine. Um, what we'll do, oh, if you, you might have noticed that uh, how easy that split. Now that's, um, that's another sign that, uh, that there's been some seasoning. Um, that literally just popped this log split. It has no dramas at all cutting this. Um, nice grain, you can see inside, it's it's dry this stuff's ready to go again there's that um that gray edge not only that but that stuff there that edge there has um been in contact with um my chainsaw and so there's bar oil there so that's one thing well i'll show you in a second but that will get removed um anyway um we'll leave the log splitter head over to the log saw and i'll i'll show you the next process so this is a log saw um it's a very basic one Probably one of the cheapest on the market. However, it's done me done me well. It's cut lots of wood over the last couple of years. Here's, here's our splits. The way this saw works, obviously the saw. There's a big blade. It's electro, electric driven, electric motor. And I move and I move the saw or the sorry, I move the um, the bench here into the blade. So anyway, we'll um, we'll fire him up and I'll show you.
Rightio, so here we've got our, our large chunks. And look, if you were running an offset and you decided that you wanted to run briquettes, charcoal, etc., th these would be good size. Um, but for most, um, they're too big. Um, this is at the point where we basically get rid of all of the waste. So there's that edge there, which is again had uh, bar oil, etc., and been exposed to the sun. Um, so we get we get rid of those. Now, what I like to do is try and keep them all sort of uh, um, even sizes. And and what we try and do when we when we um, uh, put all this into a bag is we try our best to. Um, have a variation somewhat of a variation in size as well so that if someone has a drum there's going to be some larger chunks in there weber ga etc we try and avoid people having to get our product and then have to cut it themselves um, but not only that but um, if you let us know um, we we cut it to whatever size you want so if you if you use a little weber ga then we'll cut them smaller again the chunk size um, is going to determine the efficiency of, of your of your cook um, efficiency of your fire your burn um, and you're aiming for that nice thin blue smoke. So if you were to go and put a big chunk of wood like this, let's say on top of a snake in a kettle, um, that fire is not gonna have enough energy to get that chunk to the temperature it needs to be to get that nice thin blue smoke. So anyway, we'll go and uh, we'll, we'll chop a few. See that? That's just a couple of smaller pieces. We've got some larger pieces here. And then a larger again. There's things you need to be careful of when you're cutting wood like this. Um, you'll see that there's little knots here. See that that was once a branch, and that's difficult to cut. This is this stuff is all um, the trunk of the apple tree. So it's generally it's nice and straight grain. Whereas if you go and get some of the um, some of the side branches or the central leader, um, it can be very difficult. This is this this is about as easy as it gets. As you can see, I've got a, uh, I've got a hardwood um, basically block here. Previously, I was just using this bench, and uh, and and as you can see, this is uh, Oregon. It's very soft, and uh, and I've created big divots in it. So um, this this bench is very handy. As you can see, all the wood um, pulls in the middle. It's an old carpenter's bench, and generally, what I'll be doing is I'll have a basket like that in the shed, and at the end of it, when I'm done, make sure that just straight over the edge and then on to the next one rightio so we're sort of coming towards the end of the process now um, these are our bags obviously um, we've punched some air holes in there so there is still some air movement which is good um, stickers produced locally um, now this is something that uh, my kids get involved with um, they'll often put the stickers on the bags they'll do the hole punching uh, generally my role in the business is to do all the cutting and the laboring and collecting um, and the girls do all the bagging. But what, what we do um, before anything is bagged is we use a, a moisture tester so that we can we, so that we know or we can ensure that the, uh, the, the moisture content of the wood is at a level which is suitable for barbecue. Um, people, people will have their own opinions on what, what um, percentage they like to like to run with. Um, I think generally um, lower is most often better. Um, it'll help promote that efficient burn when you're, when you're barbecuing. But it doesn't have to be bone dry either. You know, like you know, I personally think you can over season wood. Um, it seems to lose some of its integrity. I think some of the uh, the weather in particular um, almost like washes out the wood, some of the tannins, etc. Um, but anyway, the, and again, like the girls and the extended family do most of this. But all it is is we do a final quality check before it goes into a bag. Again, we'll, we'll sort of pick out some uh, very a little bit of variation in size, but generally, you know, like that's probably the smallest stuff you'll find, and, and you know that will be the biggest. So we try our best to cater for everybody. Apple is uh, quite tricky to bag because it will fill the bag because it's a fairly fairly light wood. Um, but so anyway, 
Um, so that's basically it. We'll put a little postcard in the back like we do. Um, and at this point then it'll be weighed and every single bag is weighed. Um, it's uh, they're very particular once they get into the shops that um, there is in fact one kilo of smoking wood in the bag, which is obviously the law and necessary. So uh, like I said, every single bag is, um, is, is weighed. The, um, the wood smoking guide is individual for each particular wood, is obviously being apple. Um, we've indicated what we think the flavour strength is, um, how it reacts with different uh, types of protein. Um, each different variety has its own, own, uh, own chart. Um, so when you go to uh, the butcher or wherever you're getting the product from, you can use this as a guide. Um, your opinion may differ. Um, that's the thing about barbecue. Um, everyone has their own opinions, but this was ours. Um, you can also find that uh, and download it for free from the website. We like to put a uh, little postcard in then, and we do that because we want to um, uh, emphasize that we're a small business um, and uh, just family stuff. But uh, basically, oh, and also while I'm thinking about it, some of the, some, just some details on, on us is on the back and you know where to find us, social media, etc., cetera, and, uh, and a little discount code there for you too. So anyway, that goes in there bag will get weighed, that's about it, and then uh, seal him up, one down, a couple hundred to go. Right guys, uh, look, um, when you have a business involving wood, obviously it uh, can be heavy sometimes, so we, we need the, um, the tractor a fair bit. So. Um, what we'll do is we'll load the forks up and, uh, and I'll show you how we process some iron bark. Rightio, weapon of choice for uh, for cutting iron bark. Um, we go through a few chains, but uh, this stuff, this uh, saw here has done me well. Um, and we weren't initially going to do splits, but we got sort of pulled in that direction. Um, as you can see, they come in long lengths. Some of them are massive, um, and uh, it's a lot of work to, to get these. Um, a lot of time, um, and it's all uh, split using the, the hydraulic log splitter you saw earlier, so it's fairly slow. Um, we're hoping in the future that we're going to be able to upgrade some infrastructure with perhaps my brother as well and, and be able to process this stuff a bit quicker because at the moment in SA uh, iron bark from us is, is on the low side um, there's plenty over there seasoning we'll show you that in, in, a, in a minute but uh, this stuff here um, this is this is the priority now to get all this process so you can see on this tree here uh, how resinous this bark is this is clearly iron bark and it's very sappy very resinous it's the it's the tree's natural protect, protection against fire so you look you, you don't want to be putting that in your barbecue um, you might come across a few bits here and there but um, in general um, once this wood is seasoned it all falls off anyway and and we try and avoid putting any in the bag at the end of the day so um, we try our best to provide a premium product uh, one that all you're gonna have to do is open the bag get a split out and stick it on the fire and away you go. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Um, iron bark is um, very noticeable. Um, you can see that big log up there as well. Uh, some of this it was dead standing, so the, the bark has actually fallen off already. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll get into the second round and uh, get into it. So this is what well, what we call a round. Um, you obviously this is where you get your length of the split from, um, and that's that's a pretty good sort of um, pretty good length fits nicely in your average Joe smoker. So whether it be Hark Dry Fire, Hark Chubby, uh, Wildfire Smoker, which is what what I've got, 
um, and then here you see that we've probably halved that and then halve it again and and in some cases in the larger logs you know you'll be you'll be um, going through multiple times on the log splitter so again it can be time consuming um, I think it's important uh, and when we have customers come here I'd like to try and explain to people the work that goes involved in, in producing this sort of stuff because it, it, it can be quite, very time consuming um, I'm finding that the the log splitter I'm having to wait for it a lot it's not it's not fast enough so um, and then like I enjoy um, people coming here and explaining the, the work that goes on behind the scenes so uh, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying it uh, so far Right here guys, so here we have a big pile of iron bark, some we prepared earlier. Um, look, there's there's weeks of work involved here. Um, me and the girls um, have processed this over a couple of months uh, after work, etc. And we've created splits like this. Um, iron bark, uh, that's, that's a good size, that'll fit nicely in your firebox. Um, this stuff is gonna take some more time to season. Um, we've had a very, very mild summer. Um, there'd be, I don't know, look, 10 tonnes, I would say here, um, with all that other stuff there, we're probably looking at holding about 20 tonnes of wood all up. Um, like I said, we weren't initially going to do the splits, but um, we sort of got pulled in that direction. That was through customer demand. And um, we thought, look, we'll, if we're going to do it, we'll do it as best as we possibly can. And, um, and look, we, we think that um, we've got some pretty good product uh, coming out and it's, again it's available in some uh, local uh, butcher shops the ones that are really low and slow focused and and uh, and keen to cater for um for, for the guys with the offsets um what we'll do now is i'll just show you a few other varieties and how we we, we stack it season it and store it um ready to be um to pro to be processed like you uh, were shown earlier Rightio guys, so earlier we um, processed some apple uh, and like I said it was the it was the trunk so it's the very base of the tree, it's nice and straight grained, it's easy to process. This gear on the other hand are the central leaders, so this is the main stem um, and all of these bits here were once branches that come off of it and these would have been your fruit bearing limbs. So again this stuff has come from a commercial orchard in the Riverland um, uh, and by the way makes some really tasty cider, it's Jackman cider, beautiful stuff. Um, so the challenge we have when we process this is this it goes on my uh, my log saw easily but when it comes time to actually splitting this stuff into nice sized chunks it's very difficult because you've got grain in the wood which runs at all different angles and it's very difficult um, next stuff here is um, is peach and I'm pretty proud of this gear this, it doesn't get much better as far as smoking wood and and peach in particular is concerned again Riverland um, this equates to about 800 trees. So these are the base, um, and your the, the crown was here, and then the crown is where the fruit bearing limbs were, were once. Um, this here represents about four trips to the Riverland. A Riverland trip, we generally leave at 2 a.m., uh, me and the old man, and uh, we, we leave at 2 a.m., we get there, we do our day's work, and then we drive back. We arrive home at about 6 p.m., so it's a bloody long day. 16 odd hours etc um, and there's no no trucks here it's just a stock trailer 8x5 caged and the ute so um, we, we we go pretty far to find the good gear um, this this tree would have been probably between 10 and 15 years old commercial tree um, and, and like I said collected from the Riverland um, this stuff is ready to go um, I collected this two years ago um, again you can see it looks dry it's got a big split um, and again, we will process this exactly the same way as we did with the apple. Go onto the onto the hydraulic splitter and um, cut it into a half moon shape, and then onto the um, log saw, and then hand cut uh, to the chunk size. Right, and again, um, you've got your peach trunks. Here is the central leader. Um, again, your fruit bearing limbs would have come off of here, and we have the same issues as we do with the apple. Is that this stuff here? Is very twisted grain makes for very um, difficult splitting but uh, just takes a bit longer that's all rightio here we have um, some nectarine the bark itself looks very similar although um, nectarine bark has a slight um, greeny tinge to it doesn't mean that it's not seasoned it's just that's just the way that it is the um, the, the bark has a, has a bit of, bit more of a green tinge and that's how I tell the difference between um, peach and nectarine but this nectarine in particular has come up with some amazing colour, very orange, 
um, when when this is exposed to sun for a longer period it will go gray but in the middle it was going to be like a big color pop um, one of my favorite smoking woods and the people that have used it know that it's a incredibly sweet smelling um, very different to peach although peach does have a sweet smell as well but this this gear here um, this is about as good as it gets um, and and quite difficult to find in large quantities Rightio, another fruit wood. Um, can you guess what it is? Popular one. Probably the most popular smoking wood worldwide, uh, cherry, uh, and for good reason. It's a quality wood, goes fantastic in the barbecue, smells great, um, provides a nice uh, mild uh, smoke influence, um, and pairs well with any protein. So like, if you're not sure what to use, when in doubt, go with some cherry. Um, this stuff is, uh, is really nice. Um, you don't often find cherry in this sort of size. As you can see, these are all splits. So, you know, th these uh, these cherry trees were very old. Um, it'd be nice to be able to find a whole heap of this and, you know, we could um, start producing some cherry splits because I've been asked a lot, but unfortunately, um, they're, just not, they're just not there. And when you're talking about large um, uh, portions of cherry, generally you're talking about full tree removal um, and cherry, they don't get removed that often unless they're diseased, etc. but because uh, they're such a high value crop. Uh, and, and in the Adelaide Hills, they, they produce uh, good uh, quantities and quality um, product. So um, this stuff will all be uh, processed on the log saw and, uh, and then again, hand cut to the chunk size that we're looking for. Rightio, so this is, uh, this is a different um, wood. This is Melaleuca. Um, my opinion, quite underrated, but it has terrible bark. It's like it's paper and you need to get rid of it. Um, so we make sure that all of it is gone. Once it's seasoned, it just literally pops off. But uh, that, that is a fantastic wood. It's, it's quite hard. Um, common name is tea tree, Melaleuca. Um, good local one, good option. Rightio. Um, this is probably the hardest wood to process. This particular lot that I've got, this is apricot. Um, as you can see, these were really old and gnarly trees. And all these knots here, even cutting this stuff is difficult because the, the grain in the wood is so twisted. Um, uh, not my favourite uh, fruit wood, but a lot of people love it. Um, when it's burning, it reminds me of, uh, has like a, a grassy type smell. But uh, look, not a bad option, but my opinion, there's better. Um, just back on the cherry for a sec. So this is generally how we find it. These are yearly prunings. Um, the, the grower will prune a tree to shape it. Um, so they can process it better. Um, it's very rare that you get large chunks of cherry. It's more often than not lengths like this, and these go straight onto the log saw. The ends like that are removed. That's had barrel, et cetera, on it. Same with that end. You know, like it's been exposed to water, probably a bit of mold growth, so we get rid of that. And then we cut it up into the chunks, sizes required. Alrighty guys, just, just quickly, um, there's some techniques um, involved in uh, seasoning wood uh, to the high standard. Um, you'll notice that underneath here, there's pallets, so it's actually off the ground. That's, the, that's probably the most important thing is to, is to um, ensure good quality, you get it off, off the ground. Um, we're at Maponga here, we get about 700 millimetres of rain every year, and the, the ground is, is soaked for you know four months of the year. So you get it up off the ground, um, stops it from breaking down, mould, etc. Because at the end of the day, this wood here, it wants to basically turn back down into dirt. It wants to compost. So we've got to try and stop that. Um, off the ground and where we are here, you can see there's, it's all cleared land. This is all dairy land. Um, lots, of, lots of dairy farms around here. Fleurier milk's just, just in that direction. You can almost see their cows from here. Um, in fact, that, I'm pretty sure that clearing up there with the irrigated green grass, that's, that's Fleurier milk. Um, we get a whole lot of wind here and you can, it's, it's windy now, um, it's always windy here and what happens is the wind comes through and it literally sucks the moisture out of all the wood. It's actually the wind and the air movement that seasons wood faster than the sun uh, and, and heat. Um, the only other way you can speed that up uh, quick, 
quicker is in a kiln, um, kiln dried wood, um, which is probably what a lot of the mass produced commercial wood um, uh, is, is kiln dry. Um, we go all natural here um, and the wind does the work. Rightio, so through the process we do create some waste and as you can see there's a bit of it. This is the burn off pile. Um, we probably do two of these a year. Um, as you can see, for example, this is the top of a bourbon barrel. There is all like a wax here. Sometimes it's painted, it just depends. Um, you know, this is a big piece of cherry. It's all been mouldy, it's got some bug damage. So, you know, this is where all the stuff that doesn't make it into a bag ends up. Right here guys, um, I just want to show you this wood. Um, this is an acacia, um, acacia pendula. Um, it's a handy having good contacts because this stuff isn't easy to find. Um, local uh, SA barbecue legend Dan Johnson hooked me up with this gear. Um, it smells very, very sweet. Um, it's much like uh, some of the jam wood that I've used previously. You can see how it has a distinct difference between the heartwood and the sapwood. Um, this stuff is in the process of being seasoned. It's still going to take some months. Um, however, this gear here is beautiful. I have a feeling it's going to be one of the more popular woods that we uh, that we have. Um, I really like it. I had some previously uh, that I, I tested, and we gave some out to some to some friends, and um, uh, hence why I've had to hunt it down so hard because it was popular. I had lots of people asking me about that. Rightio, guys. Um, look, I hope you've enjoyed the um, the behind the scenes sort of tour and, and how we do things here at Natural Smoke. Um, but look, um, one important thing. As, can I get your beer, mate? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. What I've done myself. Beautiful. All right, guys. Um, let's let's talk about wood a little bit. Um, so this is all from SA. Um, there's a lot of different varieties. We've got about 20, I think, from from count. Um, some of the biggest variations you get is in wood density, and that translates to burn time. Um, so let's say you're cooking a brisket and you want to have plenty of smoke on there for a number of hours to help build your bark up. Um, uh, bark formation in, in some part is attributed to heat, smoke, your rub, fat, etc. And, uh, and picking the right wood can really help with that. And also some also colour. Um, you've got um, black wattle, um, iron bark, bourbon barrel, wine barrel, um, which is which is oak. Um, which are all hardwoods, red gum as well. Um, and they they do a good job at having a long burn time and, and assisting with some bark formation on beef in particular. So generally I like to, to go with the hardwoods for beef um, and with things like chicken, um, pork, fish, or your white meat, um, I, th I think uh, your fruit woods uh, tend to do quite well. A bit, bit, uh, bit milder in the smoke influence. Um, uh, I think one of the biggest uh, differences in the wood type is the way that they that they smell. I mentioned earlier about peach and nectarine um, uh, having different smells, and, and look, they do. Uh, nectarine, which is this one here, um, is a really good wood. I like it. It's one of my favourites. I use a fair bit of it. Um, so if I'm doing some pork, uh, chicken, that's 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 a go-to, and uh, and I and I and I do it as well when I've got people coming over that aren't. Uh, barbecue people um, and they they get to my house and they can smell that sweet smell and uh, and they they're, they're not expecting it um, they, they're sort of asking me well what's in there it's very sweet it's almost like you're throwing a whole lot of lollies on your barbecue and and then you're getting this awesome smell come out of it so um, that that's a really good one for your for your white meats um, but look it's all it's all up to yourselves I mean this stuff here bourbon barrel very popular that smells fantastic people that have used that you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But see, the the, bur the bourbon barrel and the wine barrel, um, although they're exactly the same or very similar type um, base wood, being um, oak, likely American oak, some French, etc. Um, they they smell distinctly different. When you're using wine barrel, you can smell wine, and when you're using bourbon, it is a, a very sweet, whiskey bourbon um, spirit type smell. So. That, that's a, another couple of good options. Um, this one here, Aussie oak, which unlike the bourbon and wine barrel, that's the common name for it, Aussie oak. It's actually not a true oak. It's a eucalypt. Um, and it's a eucalypt obliqua I, from memory. Um, that's a, that's really good, um, very popular. That's a perfect all-rounder. And that grows a lot around here, La Flurio, the southern sort of area in Adelaide. Um, 
you know, then we've got got peach. Um, that one there is jujube, which is the Chinese date, which is actually considering it's a it's a um, it's a fruiting plant. It's actually a fairly strong influence, which is which is interesting, and it's got a unique smell to it too. Um, that is your um, almond, very very hard, very heavy, um, packs a reasonable punch. Get a lot of burn time out of that. This one is your pecan. That's black wattle. Black wattle has like a bit of a sheen to it. That's a that's an acacia. I, I quite like acacias. Um, that wood, that mile previously is an acacia, and I think that's a fantastic smoking wood. Um, olive, really, really hard, really dense, and very uh, like the smell when you're burning that is very pronounced. Definitely, you can smell that it's olive. And look, this is a new one. That there is grapevine. I don't know if you can see that, but see how porous that is? That's a very, very light one. I'm gonna say, and again, it's been seasoning for some time. Uh, haven't used a lot of it, but um, come across some, lucky enough. But I have a feeling that's gonna be a very short burn time with that one. And there, then again, there's your mile. Really, really heavy. Like just, just picking these two up here, like it's just like chalk and cheese. Short burn time, long burn time. Long cooks, short cooks. Um, the most important thing with using smoking wood is having an efficient burn. So um, we've got the offset going at the moment with a little trial thing we're doing there um, with your drum. Just it's you're looking for that thin blue smoke, and that's a good indicator that you've uh, you've got your wood chunk up to a particular temperature, and the the, the chemicals and the components that are being emitted are in a good proportion. Thin, thin and blue means very small particles. And generally at that, at that point, the, um, you're looking for things like glycol and syringol, which are the, um, the components which, are, which attribute to smell and flavor in, in um, your barbecue. So um, it'll, you can get very sciencey. Um, I'm not gonna get real sciencey, but because it, you know, it's good to know, but not knowing it isn't gonna mean that you can't cook good barbecue. So uh, I'm not gonna go right into it, but um, um, that's just basic. So, um, smoke ring, we'll gloss over that quickly. Um, smoke ring is formed uh, between uh, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, and myoglobin in meat. Um, myoglobin is a, uh, is a protein which is found in, in, in animals and it's used to transport oxygen throughout the beast. Um, and that stuff when you, let's say you go to a butcher and that, that, that uh, liquid, people think it's blood, it's not, it's, it's called myo water and there's myoglobin in that. Um, so a couple of little tricks with getting a good smoke ring, although it doesn't attribute to flavor, um, is cold and wet. Smoke likes to stick to cold and wet surfaces. Um, and um, that myoglobin that you get in your packet, don't, don't throw that out, don't wash your meat. Um, uh, um, and if you want to reapply some of that, I've done some experiments where I've actually reapplied some of that myoglobin when I put it into the smoker and it really pumps up the color. Um, that's a, it's all a chemical reaction that occurs as, as a result of the reaction with um, the, 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 the smoke components and that myoglobin. So um, just an interesting little fact there. All right, Russ, so I wanna know what is your favorite wood for what species? Look, it's not easy because because uh, I like them all. But uh, look, if I'm gonna uh, have to, if you're gonna make me pick, mate, I'm gonna pick um, for beef, iron bark, bourbon barrel, and black wattle. Um, again, all you're talking like density. Like I like a nice long burn time, especially like in a kettle. Um, you might run three chunks, four chunks, whatever, and get plenty of smoke out of that. You know, number of hours. Um, for for pork, Aussie oak's quite good. Again, it, it's got good density, but a bit more of a milder um, influence. Um, you've got your wine barrel, which is which is oak, and then your cherry. You can't can't get wrong with cherry. Cherry, like I said to you earlier, good one for everything. Um, now, um, chicken, pork. Um, I normally look to go for something with a bit more like fa fairly light in the smoke. Um, that's the sort of stuff I cook for my family and my ki my kids in particular. A bit sensitive to smoke, like many are. Um, so I've got my nectarine here and apple, um, both very popular. Apple is another one like cherry, which is, you know, like worldwide popularity with that one. Um, lamb, olive, I like the smell. Um, again, good density. Um, 
Personally, I like lamb with good smoke influence. Um, plenty of gnarly bark on that as well, especially if you're doing pulled lamb. Um, but the smell when this is when this is burning just has that Mediterranean. This works well with lamb, you know. Um, but uh, look, each to their own. I'd like to know what you guys like. These are just my opinions. Um, let me know what you think. Just one thing I want to add. So when you're using smoking wood, think of it like an ingredient. It's like salt, it's like pepper. Um, don't go overboard. It shouldn't be the star of the show, but if you don't use it, you will notice. Um, go, go, go cook some, um, some pork ribs in the, in the um, oven versus in a drum and you'll notice the difference yourselves. Um, but look, the th I think a, a common mistake that people use when they first get into barbecue and, and using wood and smoking is they overdo it um, and throw a whole lot of wood in there. So if I was um, doing, so let's say some, some pork ribs, you know, let's say four hour cook, maybe five, maybe, um, one or two wood chunks is fine for that. With your beef, if you're doing brisket in the drum or in the kettle, you might use three or four at that, at that size. You know, um, don't don't overdo it. I mean, I'd love to. I'd, I'd love for you to go and use a whole lot of wood, but I want you to cook some good barbecue. So um, that's just my last little tip. Righty, guys. Look, just in closing, because um, Aaron and I are going to get a steak on here. Um, he couldn't come over and not cook something, so we're going to get the steak master to, to show me how it's done. But look, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the um, Lonso Basics family. Um, you guys have shown heaps of support to, to me and my family in the business over the last couple of years. So uh, again, thanks guys, really appreciate it. Um, look forward to catching up with you again. You beauty. No taste, taste. Mm. Oh bad. yeah, oh yeah. That's that top shelf on that. You ripper. So you've added a few sausages before, mate. <laughs> Did that like a pro. Ooh. Not bad. Mm. Where are they from? Uh, that's uh, Kelly. Ooh. Kelly Walter. You ripper. I'm going to get stuck into them too. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're about to leave Natural Smoke headquarters, so appreciate you guys sticking around watching that video there's a lot in it but there's a lot of good information and it's good to see what happens behind the scenes of some of these great small businesses that support us russ really loves the support of everyone from the low and slow basics community the barbecue community in general in australia so um, if you want to check him out head to naturalsmoke.com.au or find them on facebook instagram and um, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, if we've missed anything, uh, don't hesitate to either flick them a message on Facebook or Instagram or just ask in the comments below and, and we'll get them answered for you. So thanks for watching everyone. We're about to get onto the main road, so I better put the camera away and we'll see you next time.